Hello everybody, Rogue Fox here, and welcome back to another Minecraft Bedrock Edition Redstone Tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'll show you how to make a very simple and expandable automatic honey farm or honey bottle farm for your survival world or realm. What we're looking at here is a single module or a single automatic honey farm, but like I just mentioned, this is an expandable design, so if we take a look over to the left, we have this whole setup right here, and this has 15 beehives. The honey balls will be dispensed onto the grass area with the flowers, and those are being collected by a hopper minecart down below. So we'll go ahead and see that get picked up just like that, and they'll end up in the chest here. Now, for the beginning of this tutorial, I will show you how to make the single module, but if you stick around to the end, I'll show you how to expand it and also add in the collection system down below. Just to throw some numbers out there, I went ahead and ran both of these farms side by side for 10 minutes. And the results, obviously, the farm with the 15 beehives definitely outperformed the single module. But again, just to give you some numbers, after 10 minutes, the 15 beehives gave me two stacks and three of honey bottles. And remember, honey bottles do stack in 16. So two stacks of 16 and three is what I got out of the 15 beehives. And after 10 minutes for the individual module, I ended up with three honey bottles. So of course, the more beehives you have, the more honey bottles you're gonna get. But like I said, I just wanted to throw some numbers out there. Now to make this automatic honey farm or bee farm, you are gonna need a three by eight area. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our supplies. And there we go. There are all the supplies we'll need for today's build. So what you're gonna need is a beehive or a bee nest with three bees in it, of course. One dispenser, one hopper, one comparator, one repeater, five redstone dust, eight glass blocks, one rail, one hopper mine cart, your building blocks, a grass block, a flower, one chest, a stack of bottles, and of course, as I just mentioned, you are gonna need three bees. With that being said, if you wanna pause the video, go ahead and do that, grab your supplies, and then we'll jump right into the build. To get things started, we're gonna place in the collection system. Now, I always build everything above ground so you can see all the redstone and everything going on. But for those of you putting in the ground like I imagine you would, you want to come two blocks below the ground level. So this is going to be the ground level. And then we have one, two blocks down is where the chest goes. So right here, front and center, place down your chest like that. Grab your hopper, swing around to the back of the chest, crouch place that hopper into the back of the chest. Get your rail, crouch place the rail on top of the hopper like so. Get some blocks, place a temporary block here, a block right there. Now go ahead and grab your hopper minecart and place your hopper minecart on top of the rail. So we have this block in place so it doesn't go rolling off or else it would. Now from here what we're going to do is place another temporary block right here. Get your grass block and place it right above the hopper minecart. And then go ahead and place your flower. And there we go, that is the collection system all set up. From here, we need to place in our beehive or nest, and also our dispenser that is going to collect from the beehive when it's full. So to do that, let's go ahead and place a temporary block back right there. I guess we could have left that one behind. Get your beehive or nest, place it on top of that block. Place two more temporary blocks above the hive or nest, knock the bottom one out. Grab your dispenser, come on down below so we're looking at the bottom of this block. Place your dispenser on the bottom of that block so the dispenser is facing the hive or nest. And then we can go ahead and knock off that last temporary block. So that is how this looks so far. Now let's go ahead and wire up the redstone. For the redstone, what we want to do is swing around to the back side here. Place a block down like that. Get your comparator. Run the comparator out from the beehive or nest like so. Next, run that comparator into a block here. Come two more blocks out like this. We want to come a block up right here. We can knock these blocks out. Next, place a temporary block here with your glass block on top. One more block here. And then a block against the dispenser. Next, go ahead and place redstone dust down like this. Three, four, five. And then, right in this gap, place a repeater running into this block. And leave it set to one tick. So that is the redstone all set up. Now... The cool thing about this is I just saw this recently, but it looks like Java Edition can now place redstone on top of glass. So theoretically speaking, this build should also work in Java Edition. 
Do you explain the redstone behind this and why we have five like that? A beehive or nest will have honey levels. So let's say we have one bee that pollinates from the flower, goes into the hive and pops back out. That is going to give us a honey level of one and it's going to max out at five before the hive is completely full and is ready to be harvested. So in this case, we are using bottles to get honey bottles. If you have shears in here, we could get the honeycombs, but it does have to reach a honey level of five. So again, if all three bees go in and pop back out, that is gonna give us a honey level of three, and each honey level is gonna give us a signal strength of one. So if we have three, it's gonna go to one, two, and three, and then we wait for two more bees to go back in, pop back out, and that will give us our output of five and also the honey level of five, and that will power the dispenser here, collecting the honey inside. Now that the redstone is all done, it's time to finish up the rest of the farm. So what we can do here is look at our flower here, place glass off to the sides like this and come two blocks up on each side. Like that. This part is totally up to you how you want to do it. You can make a bigger enclosure with a door, which is probably what I recommend so you can get in and out of the hive. But for this example, this is how I'm going to do it. And then I'm going to place a temporary block here. And then we want our three bees to be inside. So with that, you can bring them in with your own nest or you can lure them in with a flower. But we want a total of three bees because that's how many a hive or nest can house. So there we go. This is all done and ready to go. These bees are going to pollinate. They are going to start going inside of the hive or nest. And as I mentioned, once they come back out, they are going to give us an output of one until it goes all the way to five. Now, I didn't forget about the bottles. So for this, this is going to be the tricky part here. So let's go ahead. We're going to grab all of our glass bottles. And what we want to do is place glass bottles in each slot of our dispenser. So in this case, let's go ahead and place seven all the way around, leaving us eight in the very beginning. It doesn't have to be this many, but you just want bottles in each slot. And the reason for this is that once the dispenser activates, let's say we have an opening. So we have bottles here and these are all open. The bottle will collect the honey, but the honey bottle will come back into the dispenser. And with that, that's bad because at some point this is going to randomly fire the honey bottle when we want it to fire an empty bottle. And then that's going to kind of break the farm. So we don't want that. But what this also allows is since all of these slots are full, the honey bottle has nowhere to go except out. And to make sure it does go forward, we do need to have blocks on each side of the dispenser like this. So it's completely enclosed by this block, these two blocks. Again, the only place for the honey bottle to go is forward. So hopefully that explanation made sense. Now we just wait to collect some honey. At this point in time, three bees have come out. So again, we do have a restaurant output of three. I believe two more just went back in. So we wait for those two to pop back out and that will give us again our restaurant output of four and five, which will power our dispenser. And then we'll see the honey bottle pop out down below and that will be collected by the hopper minecart going down into the chest. So let's go ahead. We are gonna wait just a little bit. All right, there is number four and number five should be right behind it. There we go. And we just saw the honey bottle pop out and that went down into our chest below. So there we go, there is a working automatic honey farm. Now let me go ahead and show you how to expand this build. And it's actually very simple. All we do is repeat everything that we've done here. So I'll go ahead and do this quickly. We wanna have blocks coming out with our competitors coming out from each one. In this case, we are gonna expand this farm to be five modules or five beehives. So again, following the same process that we have here. Do this blocks out and let's go ahead and place the redstone down right now because we are going to cover it glass blocks across blocks across here blocks across this side and then redstone dust here just like we did for the beginning and then repeaters running into each of these blocks and there we go that is how we expand it now you will see these redstone lines activated here, but we only have an output coming from the first hive. And the cool thing about this is that one hive is never gonna power 
any of the other ones. So if we have one, two, three, four, five, it's only going to power this one because if we go any other direction, one, two, three, four, five, it's not going to power that one. So for those of you who are concerned about that, you don't have to worry. So that is how we expand it. Now let me go ahead and show you how to install the collection system down below. For this collection system, we are going to make an automatic minecart unloader. And this is based off of a tutorial that I released a while back. So a card to that will be popping up in the top right corner. And of course, there will be a link to it down in the description below. But we are going to build it right here. So first things first, we can remove this old collection system. We no longer need that. And let's collect our honey bottles, which we had two. And then we are going to replace this with a line of blocks down below. And what I like to do is come one out from however long the farm is. So just like this, you want to come a block up. Get yourself a redstone torch. Place a torch there. Or you can place a lever and power it. Because we are going to throw down some powered rails just like this. So all of these are going to be activated. Now for this part, what I want to do is place a regular rail right here. Block here. And for this, you are going to need a detector rail. So place down a detector rail there. Block. Regular rail. And then what we need to do is grab ourselves a hopper. And let's see, what block don't we need? Let's go ahead and replace this right there. And we are going to need a collection system. So let's place... Our new collection system is going to be right here. So let's make a double chest. Get your hopper. Crouch place a hopper into the back of the new chest like so. Powered rail on top of that hopper, which is not going to be powered by anything just yet. And whoops, we do want that back. Still working with my old controller here, so everything is kind of just drifting off. From here, what we want to do is come a block up like this. A block here. And then a block up like that, giving us this shape here. Now what we're going to do is grab a comparator and out from this hopper, run the comparator out from the hopper. So once we get items inside, that is going to power this comparator, which is going to power this block, which is going to invert a redstone torch like that. And then let's go ahead and place a repeater like this. So there is the side profile. So you can see what it looks like in its entirety. So that part is done. Now what we need to do is let's go ahead and run some blocks along like this. From this detector rail, place down two bits of redstone dust. Get your repeater. Run a repeater along the side of the hopper like that. Block here. And redstone dust so it gives us this shape here. So that will also invert the torch. Now all we need to do is place our hopper minecart on top. So at the moment, we have it going. It's going to run back and forth, just like this. It's going to go. Now that we have the automatic minecart unloader installed, it's time to give it a test. We'll let the bees do their thing. But what we're going to do is test it with this stack of dirt blocks. And we're going to throw this onto the tracks like so. That's going to pick up all of the items. And just so you see how this works, this hopper minecart is going to stop. It is going to completely unload all of the items in the chest before it takes off to go collecting once again. So as I mentioned, I did do a tutorial on this a while back. So if you want the in-depth explanation of how this whole thing works, go ahead and check it out. But this should be about empty. It has seven more blocks. Once it completely empties, it's going to take off. There we go. And that is how it works. So it goes back to doing what it does. And we don't have any honey bottles at the moment. We have one almost ready to go. I just placed the bees in. So they're not quite ready to drop the honey bottles. But as you saw over here and in the little time lapse during my explanation earlier, they are all being collected. So there's that. And then if we take a look inside the chest, there are all of the honey bottles that have been collected so far. Now one thing to keep in mind about this build, and I just realized it because I saw it, we do have a full beehive ready to go right there. Do keep in mind for this build that we do need to keep all slots filled in order for this to work properly. Because as I mentioned, if we have any empty gaps, if this gets filled once again, then the honey bottle is going to go inside and that is most likely going to break it. In fact, it will break it. 
So just be sure to do maintenance on all of your beehives, especially if you have a bunch of them, and make sure all slots are filled with empty glass bottles. So let's go ahead and place that there. And that did take care of the problem. So there we go. And looks like no more are filled up. But again, do keep that in mind to have all of your slots in the dispenser filled with empty glass bottles. One way to help maintain your empty bottles in your dispenser is to have some sort of unloading system like you see right here. Now I'm not gonna show you how to make this in this tutorial because I've already taken up too much time, but this is based off of another tutorial that I released a while back. So again, a card to this tutorial will be popping up in the top right corner and there will also be a link to it down in the description below. And for those of you who are gonna check it out, it is gonna look slightly different because I made it fit for this build here. So keep that in mind, but let me show you how this works. What we're gonna do is place our glass bottles inside. Now we press this button, this sends out the hopper minecart with the bottles, that's gonna distribute them. And this is gonna keep going until there are no more. So it keeps going, and as soon as it runs out of bottles, it's gonna stop on its own. So one more round. And once it comes back, it should stop like that. So it's ready to be loaded once again. A very cool and handy build to have if you wanna distribute your bottles like that. Again, a link to that will be down in the description below. And there you have it, everyone, an automatic honey bottle farm or bee farm for Bedrock Edition. And like I said, theoretically speaking, this build should also work on Java Edition because they can now place redstone on top of glass, which I'm sure is very exciting. So this build should work both in Java and on Bedrock. But with that being said, everyone, this is the end of today's redstone tutorial. I really hope you guys enjoyed. This has been Rogue Fox, and I will see you later.